So again, hello everyone. My name is uh, Ari Krokach. I'm from UniCloud, uh, from the UniCloud, from Unitronics, from the UniCloud team, and welcome to Unitronics uh, UniCloud events uh, webinar, where we are going to speak about uh, UniCloud uh, automatic notification uh, model. Should you have any questions uh, during the session, please. Uh, use the questions tool of the GoToWebinar and I will do my best to address them while we are speaking and uh, while we have the session and uh, maybe also and of course also at the end in our QA session. So let's start. So what is UniCloud's event? What are the types, triggers, and so on? So UniCloud Events is basically an automatic notification uh, system uh, which is based on predefined rules and conditions. We have three triggers that can basically trigger and initiate a send of an automatic SMS or an email. The first one is a schedule one, scheduler one, which is triggered based on a time and date interval. It can be a daily report of your uh, machine status. It can be just to send yourself the data, the telemetry, telemetry data every day as a backup, because you don't have uh, really access to the database. So if you want to save it locally, you can send yourself uh, the database once a day, once a week, once a month, and so on, uh, or to basically analyze, for example, every week, every two weeks, the performance of your machine in order to understand how to improve in terms of production and what are the causes, uh, for example, for downtown of machines. So this is the scheduler, which you can choose. I'll show you later on uh, how to do that. The second trigger is alarms. You know alarms from the PLC. So all the alarms that you can configure on the PLC, such as communication loss, uh, critical alarms, temperature is too high, and so on and so on. And so on. Uh, you can basically decide to get a notification automatically when such an alarm uh, is popping up. And the third one is based on telemetry. So, for example, if the temperature of this pump is above 90 degrees, I need to know about it. If the uh, pressure in the pump, uh, pressure out is lower than the pressure in, in such and such percentage, I want to know because then I understand there is an issue with the pump and with the water flow and so on, so on. So it can be basically triggered by any value, any telemetry value, and you can also address for uh, these uh, component thresholds or changes. Uh, the difference between in terms of getting those uh, notification between alarms and telemetry is that telemetry is being sent to the cloud every now and then. I mean, if your subscription is every five minutes, the telemetry will go to the cloud every five minutes and then the cloud is aware of a change in the pump temperature and only then the uh, you will get the notification about the change in the temperature versus alarm where alarm is triggered you get it in real time okay so you don't wait every five minutes every minute where you are getting the information based on the subscription alarm is in real time you get the alarm on the plc alarm is being sent to the cloud the cloud immediately send it to you while telemetry is based on uh, the subscription or the frequency of uh, when you get uh, the information. When you basically, in order to set up the alarm or the events, we have a very simple and a very robust, very powerful uh, rules and condition mechanism where you can basically uh, add more and more rules, uh, group them, decide which group will be this, uh, considered first, and you can basically calculate or using the rule over here, for example, by a value, for example, if temperature one uh, of the pump is above a certain value, like 90 degrees, or another tag, 
So if temperature one is higher than temperature, pump one is higher than temperature of pump two, just an example, or based on a calculation. So you have over here a calculator, uh, expression builder, and you can basically do whatever you do want to do as long as the expression over here is, uh, is uh, valid mathematically. So in this case, when uh, take pump one temperature multiplied by pump two speed and then divide it to 10. Just an example for an expression uh, which you can uh, do. When do we use it? I'll show you in the example, but for example, you can, by doing some mathematics over here, you can convert uh, Fahrenheit to Celsius, uh, calculate percentage and so on and so on. So it's a very powerful, a very flexible, uh, if and then rules and condition uh, which you can use. What does events giving us uh, business-wise? What is the added value of events except of straightforward understanding that if the temperature is above 90 degrees, I want to be aware of that, which is basically limited to a very technical uh, event. So the first thing that it gives us is immediate awareness. So automatic notification provide machine builders and customers, and when I say customers as well, means that every event or every notification can be sent to a group of recipients. So you can decide that this email or this SMS will be sent to yourself, will be sent to your customer uh, a service manager will be sent to a supplier that needs to send a piece of hardware and so on and so on. So again, automatic notification provides machine builders and customers with immediate awareness of critical situation. Alarms triggers can notify, can notify them about safety hazards, equipment failure or other urgent issues that require immediate attention. This enable rapid response and help in ensuring the safety of personnel, equipment condition, and even the product quality. The second added value business-wise is that you can now adapt or deploy a proactive preventing maintenance strategy rather than to be uh, waiting for the problems to, to come along. So using automatic notifications allow machine builder, and again, and then also their customer to identify and address potential issues before they lead to cost breakdown. So if, for example, I have a pump and I have a sensor of vibration near the pump and I'm getting high level of vibration, which means that the pump has a problem and I want to be aware of that before this piece of hardware, very expensive piece of hardware, uh, will be broken and then the whole machine will go down and everyone are not happy with the situation. So basically, uh, this is the, to, to use events or automatic notification in a proactive preventing maintenance uh, strategy. Uh, by monitoring telemetry data and receiving alerts when certain thresholds are exceeded or changes occur, maintenance team can take proactive measures to prevent uh, machine downtime and optimized performance. It's also helped to monitor product quality because if the machine is work, not working according to what you expect it to work, the output product will be damaged. Okay, I just had a meeting today with the customer that this is exactly what he wanted to do. He wanted to know when his machines, the manufacturer machine, is going out of the performance or the metrics that he defined because Currently, he knows about this uh, phenomenon or out of, uh, you know, that the machine is not calibrated or certain or something like that, only when the product is come out defected. So he wants to prevent it, he wants to save on material and so on and so on. So uh, you can use the UniCloud event for preventing uh, maintenance. Enhance, uh, enhance efficiency, that's the next one. That's a very important one by receiving real-time alerts about abnormal system behavior or deviation from design desired parameters. This is what exactly what I just mentioned. 
uh, users can respond and take corrective action. This helps to minimize production disruption, reduce waste, keeping product quality and increase productivity at the end of the day. And if we increase productivity, you save money. Uh, the final uh, line is, uh, is better for business wise. The next one is something that many people are not uh, aware of, but not, uh, not using it, is basically uh, scheduled decision making. So basically, uh, machine builders and customers can receive scheduled reports, for example, once a week, or once in two weeks, or once a month of performance metrics that you collect on the PLC. It's enabled them to analyze the trends and the root causes, identify area to improve and make informed decision to optimize their processes. For example, you can detect whether there is a rising trend in alarms or a specific alarm that leads to machine downtime. So basically you may, you have every once a week a, a meeting with the production managers and basically you can use this data uh, the schedule report in order to use it in a, what we call scheduled decision-making process. And the last thing that I want to uh, speak with you and show you is uh, how to streamline operation to optimize communication and data transparency. So basically machine builders can offer value added services to their customers by setting up an automatic notification for example, uh, schedule maintenance reminder, consumable re replacement alerts, or performance reports. So basically, uh, if you have a remote customer who is responsible for the maintenance, and you just detect that the machine is over 4,000 working hours, uh, you need to send them a reminder. This can be done automatically if you detect per machine, what is the, uh, you count the, the working hours, or if you identify by using it for preventing maintenance, that uh, water cleaning plant need to be replacing the filters, you can basically send automatic notification to the customer. Automatically, you can send also this notification to your sales department to give him a call and say, look, you need to replace the filters. Uh, can I send you, uh, you know, a consumables replacement part? Uh, Many people are searching for the cheapest parts, uh, but in this case, you are proactive, you know exactly when the parts need to be uh, replaced. And then you use basically the automatic monitoring, online monitoring, automatic notification for uh, a revenue stream. Let me show you how do we generate or create uh, those uh, alerts, but beforehand, I want to uh, go to our demo and just show you where do you find this uh, tool. So this tool is basically over here. Okay, sometimes you need to click on that to open it. Uh, this is the event manager. And in the event manager, you have all the templates. Some of them are in draft mode, some of them are suspended. Uh, you can see when it was created, uh, you can see the name, uh, the type, is it an SMS or an email, when it was created. You can see also the activity log, when an SMS or an email was last uh, sent, and the name. And over here, you will see if there are active, active, uh, active events. When you create a new event, you have five steps to go. First of all, you give it a name, and then you decide what will be uh, what will be the the trigger. Uh, let's give it a, a telemetry one, and this is a very important one. The latch team is basically if you detect that the temperature of the pipe of the of the pump is over 90 degrees, the default is to send you a reminder for that. Uh, assuming that this uh, condition is still there every 30 minutes. Uh, you can change this. So if this is really uh, a dramatic situation, you can decide that you want to get a, 
the notification by email or SMS every minute or every hour, once an hour or every five minutes and so on and so on. So this is basically the ledge time is a trigger. Uh, how frequent do you want to get a, a reminder or another email, another email, another SMS about the situation until this situation is uh, resolved and when the system will detect that this situation is resolved, it will stop sending you reminder automatically. So this, this is very important. Uh, let's continue to the next one. Over here we select the type. And this is the ruling and condition mechanism. Very simple, you can add more and more rules, you can add groups, uh, you can reorder the groups, which one will consider first. Let's delete it, let's delete it, let's delete it. And for example, you say, if, uh, I don't know, asset name, not asset name, asset ID is equal to this, for example, let's continue. I'm just showing you the wizard. This is where you decide what kind of information will be presented in your, uh, in your uh, message. And the second one is just to compose and this uh, compose the message. In this case, uh, it's an email, therefore we'll have a title and a text box. And I'll show you in a minute how you uh, combine over here fixed text and also uh, what you call viable placeholder, viable information that is being sent or being used, a dynamic one uh, from, uh, from Unicloud or from the system. For example, values that are changing, asset name, asset value, the actual temperature and so on and so on. And the, last, the next one is to decide who are the recipient, for example, in this case, only myself. So this is the wizard, is always the same five steps. Uh, as, as soon as that you create such a template, it will monitor all your devices, all your assets uh, at the same time, unless you specify that you want to monitor only a uh, specific uh, asset type or a specific asset, uh, specific asset. I hope this is understandable. So let's go back to uh, our presentation. And in, let's see how do we do scheduler, for example, an 8 a.m. Uh, or 9 a.m. in the morning, a report of my asset status. So in a scheduler, we can, we can uh, send two types of information. One is data. So I can send myself a CSV file with live data that I can open in Excel or any, any other editor, or I can also send this data as an embedded information inside the message up to 100 lines. Uh, so in this case, I can data can be sent as an embedded information or as an attached file. And I can send myself also a PDF report, a PDF image of a specific dashboard. Or I can send myself both of them. So I want to see the data as a data and I want to see it also in a graphical way a graphical display, like I'm basically in front of the system. So in that case, basically every day, eight o'clock a.m., nine o'clock a.m., I can get the information without even being uh, inside the system and log into the dashboard. So let's see how do I do that. So now I will create a new one, give it a name. In this case, we'll do a 9 a.m. daily status PDF report, so uh, image report. We'll use the schedule one. We want to get an email notification. We'll change. I can decide if I want a daily, weekly, when can I start it, the time. And over here, we'll decide what will be the type of data or the form of data that I want to get. So over here, I'll us to get a PDF report, it's just the name, and then I will choose my PDF report. And over here, I will choose the dashboard that I want to get its image every day in my uh, image box, email box. I also can ask to add some uh, properties like asset type, data range, geography, and so on. 
so now that I have created this uh, piece of information, I need to basically compose my email. So this is your 9 a.m. daily report, something in the body text. So attaches a link to your 9 a.m. daily report. Press next, select who is going to get it. In this case, it will be myself. Finish. Now we need to find this because I just created a template, a draft, and I need to publish it. And here it is. Now it's active and from now on, I will get a daily report at 9 a.m. of the status of all my machines. So imagine that you are a service manager, you have 30 machines, and basically by just getting this report, which you saw how is it to generate such a report, you don't need to spend, I don't know, half an hour or one hour on calls to understand which one, which machine is working, which is not, which has a critical error, which has a less critical error, which has a communication error and so on. So Nicholas is asking, where are the audience defined? I'll show you, Nicholas, uh, because over here I use a predefined uh, group of recipients. The next, the next example, if I'm not mistaken, will show you uh, how do you add members. It's quite easy, and basically the system will let you know uh, that you have recipients, uh, missing recipients. Uh, any questions up to this point? Okay, so let's continue. The next uh, type of uh, trigger are alarms. You all know the alarms from the PLC. And when we create alarms, a trigger uh, event with alarms, the Uniqlar will, will give you automatically several fields that you can use in your message automatically. Those fields are coming uh, and are engaged with information that you defined on the PLC. So the alarm name, the description, suggested solution, uh, status, is it on, is it off? And in this case, this is my own made asset name. I want to basically to add also the asset name because if you remember that I said that this uh, uh, event or definition itself is basically monitor all my, all my uh, machines. So I need to know some information to which one of my machine this uh, alert is referring. So let's see how do I do that. So again, I'm going to add a new event, give it a name, communication arrow. In this case, I will use an alarm. I want to get uh, the information every five minutes. I want to get it as an SMS. Again, I will choose which uh, machines, which is the asset type that I want to refer to. And I will start composing the ruling over here, conditions. So alarms, if alarm status is on, and I'm using and, I can use or, not, and so on. And alarm name. I need to choose alarm name. Here we go. Is equal to communication lost, communication error. So when a communication error is appearing, I want to know about it. So again, we have automatically all those four uh, type of information, but I need to know which asset or which machine uh, the, the message is uh, referring to. So I will uh, create a piece of uh, information, dynamic information of uh, asset type, asset number. This wizard, you know already from building uh, dashboards. So select the asset ID, the last value of the asset ID, let's just drag and drop it to the data and metrics, and that's it. And now basically I created another piece of information, a dynamic one, which I can merge in my message. So again, this is uh, an SMS, so I don't have a title over here. So 
So communication error for asset number, and over here I'm going to place the dynamic value that I just created, asset number is status. Okay, so in this case, it will be communication error for asset number 125 is on. Uh, I can add the alarm description, I can add the suggested solutions, and I can see the template that I just created. And of course, I can place over here a lot of information with some guides who to call and so on and so on. In this case, uh, I want to create a group of recipients. So I'll create a new group. I'll call it uh, communication error IT, com error IT, for example. So that's only a logical definition without still the content, the member itself. For a group of recipients, I will choose it, finish. And now I need to basically activate it, publish it, because I just created the draft. Publish it. And now when I'll go to the event, events tab, I will see uh, that the system telling me that there are missing recipients inside. So what I need to do, I need to click, go to edit group members, and just add any members that is part of my organization. Of course, I can delete them as well, not uh, only add them. Uh, and basically that's it. And now uh, it's active. Okay, very simple. Uh, I hope, uh, Nicolas, that I answered your questions. Okay, uh, the next uh, example that I want to show you is referring to, for example, to, to telemetry and to water cleaning, water uh, purification, purification uh, system. So it's a whole plant of water cleaning and recycling and one of the, usually one of the uh, stations over there in those plants is filtration. And in this case, I want to know when I need to, uh, to replace the filters. Why do I want to know that? Because A, I want to know, I want to keep the quality of the water. B, I want to be able to control the water flow, it means that I, uh, I have obligation to give my customer a certain volume uh, of water. And C, I want uh, that uh, this machine, this plant will be maintained correctly in order to keep uh, taking care of the equipment, uh, to have a longer lifespan. And D, I want to make my salespeople know that I want to, they, they need to push and sell new, uh, new filtration, new filters to, this, uh, to these uh, customers. So in this case, uh, I have telemetry about uh, pressure in and pressure out. And basically, um, I want to monitor the differences between the pressure in and pressure out. And I just created a rule over here that if the pressure out is equal or less than 30% the pressure in, means that uh, I need probably uh, change the filters over here. Uh, the number 30 is just a number that I placed over here. Every one of you is more professional than I am in his uh, industry. So you can place over here any threshold, every, every uh, parameters that you would like in order to, uh, to do preventing maintenance and be aware, make people aware of a situation before uh, the pressure out over here is dropped dramatically and you cannot provide the output that you promised. So let's see, how do I do that? So again, I will create a new event, give it a name. Uh, if pump pressure out is less than 30% the pressure in, in this case, I will choose telemetry. Choose again the asset type and start creating my uh, rules and condition. So I'm looking for uh, pump one uh, pressure out, here it is. 
So if tau pump one pressure out is equal or smaller than, in this case, I'm going to use the calculation tool in order to calculate 30%. So to do that, I need to choose the pressure in. Minus, again, pressure in. Multiply 0 0.3. And close the brackets, and actually that's it. So I created an ex expression over here, or a condition, condition that's checking if the pressure out is equal or less than 30% of, uh, of the pressure in. I'm not going to continue over here to show you how to generate uh, the message itself and the recipients, we already saw that. So this is how is it to use uh, to use telemetry monitoring or telemetry notification, not only for to be aware of something that is happening now, is to be able to prevent, be a proactive, prevent, make sure that the product quality is maintained, make sure that your sales department can sell more consumables than before, they are aware and make sure that everyone is, uh, everything is working uh, smoothly. Any questions up to this point? So before we are heading to the uh, what's next uh, session and the Q&A, uh, I would like to tell you and explain you and to show you how do we share dashboards and events with different level of organization, basically, uh, so there is no need to duplicate and predefine, redefine again and again the template of, uh, of the event. So let's start with the machine builder. So you can see that I have over here a machine builder which has a channel uh, uh, inside his sub-organization and this channel has two customers. So basically the machine builder, if you go over here in the details, you can see that the machine builder f f uh, can define what will be the default dashboard for machine builder to the channel and for each users. In that way, uh, you don't need to basically duplicate dashboards uh, for each organization. You can use the same dashboard and just define what will be uh, the default dashboards. In the same uh, principle, we can take uh, the events. So I have a predefined events over here. Um, this is my events. Uh, it has a setup uh, based on alarm, uh, email notification, and it has also a definition of uh, the recipient group. Currently, it's only a definition of the name of the group without the content, without the emails, the recipient itself. Uh, if I'll suspend this one, and go to edit, I can see over here that this template is shared with everyone. So I can share it with customers, with machine builders and with other machine uh, channel distribution, or I can specify that this will be shared only with a specific organization type. In this case, I want to share it with uh, all the levels. Okay, this one basically track if there is a communication uh, error. And basically it's aimed to be sent to MB event, machine builder event one, which doesn't have any uh, indication for uh, emails inside. I will publish it.
And now I will go and have a look on the level of organization. Let's go to the machine builder channel. Let's go to event. So over here, the machine builder uh, channel can use this event, which I defined over here. And as this is active, it means that he already decided and add, added uh, users uh, of his organization to the definition of uh, this t group of recipients, while those customers can use it, but they still have to define who will be the members out of their organization that are going to use this uh, event. So basically, I showed you a way, a way where you can uh, share information, share templates, uh, dashboards, and uh, share it with all the level of organization, sub-organization of your organization without the need to redefine them again and again and again. Okay, so what's next? Set up your asset status daily report. You saw it's really, really easy to do. Set up communication lost alert. So you need to be aware when UniCloud is losing connection with your machine from any reason that can be if the machine is stuck, uh, I don't know, internet fall or something like that. So we need to be aware of that. And set up any telemetry alerts. Start with something very simple, okay? If you have a pump, if you monitor uh, water flow, if you're monitoring temperature and so on, just monitor those uh, parameters and put an alert and start experience yourself. Uh, and if you don't remember how to do that, you have in our system the quick help. You go to UniCloud Guides and you are able over here to show you step by step how to schedule your daily report, your PDF report, communication error report, and so on. So for the people who don't uh, are not familiar with this uh, tool, uh, it's over here, quick help. So schedule your daily report. And then uh, a step-by-step -step, uh, guide will take you through uh, how to do things and so on and so on. So I'm going to close it now. Let's wait a few seconds and if not, we'll uh, finalize the session. A recording will be sent to uh, everyone that uh, registered. Um, basically, if you have any question, you can always address them to support at unitronics.com. Uh, some of you or many of you have my direct uh, contact and uh, if needed, uh, you can basically send me directly the, the questions or the request or you can request from the support to uh, forward the message uh, to me. Again, my name is Arik Rokach. Okay, so no more questions. So I really appreciate the time that you took uh, uh, in the middle of the day or the end of the day, the middle of the week to spend with me uh, and have a great day. Thank you guys and ladies. Thank you.